order for Holy Communion begins on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The collects appointed for the fourth Sunday in Advent begin on page 95 and on page 90 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered and running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory world without end. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost now and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians, beginning in the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here endeth the epistle. The gospel is written in the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, beginning with the 19th verse. Glory be to me, Lord. <clears throat> this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, Who then? Art thou Elias? 
And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And when they were sent, and, and though they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Church of the Holy Communion on this fourth Sunday in Advent. Good to see you all here. We especially welcome those visiting with us today. We're glad you're here. We uh, would ask you if you would, there's a visitor card in the pew back in front of you. If you have a moment, uh, fill that out, put it in the offering plate as it comes around a little later in the service. Also, as you go through the double doors on the right, there's a low table that has some visitor packets on it. Feel free to grab one of those to take with you. It'll tell you a little bit more about our church, but we are glad you're here. We also would invite you to come next door after the service. We have refreshments, coffee and donuts. I hope you'll come over and visit a little bit with us. Sunday school follows after that. The adults are next door. Uh, one note is that all of the youth and children will be in Miller Hall today. They're working on the uh, Epiphany pageant, which will be coming up on January the 8th. Uh, so all of the kids will be over in Miller Hall today, youth and, uh, youth and children together. Well, this week is uh, an important week for us. This coming Wednesday evening, we have our Lessons and Carol service. It's a big, big important service for us and outreach into the community. So we do hope you'll invite friends, neighbors, family members to come with you. It's a beautiful service. Uh, but Wednesday night, the doors will open at 6. 6.30, there'll be a pre-concert with some musicians from uh, the uh, Dallas Symphony Orchestra. 
and then at seven o'clock our service begins. Uh, and then following after the service, uh, time for uh, refreshments, reception next door. So it'll be a, a great night. I hope you'll plan on coming out to that. <clears throat> Uh, next uh, Saturday, Christmas Eve, we will have two services, one at 5.30 and then one at 10.30. The 10.30 service uh, is the cathedral service and the choir will be singing at that one. Then on Christmas Day, we have one service at 10 a.m. and the same is true for the following week, which will be uh, January the 1st, uh, which is New Year's Day, but also the circumcision of Christ. We'll have one service that day at 10 a.m. So please do take note of that. Uh, as I joked the last couple of weeks, if you show up at nine, just come get a cup of coffee and you'll be fine and have your pick of seats in here afterwards. Uh, this week, uh, we do have our daily offices going on throughout the week as usual. Um, there uh, is, is not, uh, obviously not even Song on Wednesday because the lessons and carols, but we will also have our noon Eucharist on Wednesday, which happens to be St. Thomas Day. So you're invited to come out to that. Uh, there are no Bible studies going on this week. A special thank you to everyone who showed up yesterday for the greening of the church. Uh, it looks beautiful and it's a lot of work. And so I'm very grateful for everyone who showed up yesterday to help with that. Well, other announcements, I point you to the bulletin. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week that we can pray for? Right, I know we have some out online, and so all right. So we're gonna pray. See, wait long enough, one will come. I know we have others online too. So let's let's pray in the plural. Page five hundred and ninety-seven. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Let us now stand and sing our sermon hymn, hymn number seven, Children Are Dismissed for Children's Chapel.
now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, during this season, we've been tracing the themes of Advent by looking at the collects appointed in the prayer book. On the first Sunday, we prayed that Almighty God would give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. On the second Sunday, we talked about how God gave us Holy Scripture as a means of grace to help us in this endeavor. And then last week on the third Sunday in Advent, we heard about how God has sent his ministers like John the Baptist to prepare the way for his arrival. Now on this fourth Sunday in Advent, as we draw ever so close to celebrating Christ's first Advent in Bethlehem, we are also reminded that we are one day closer to his return in glory. This gives us a sense of urgency, and this is reflected in our collect for today. The collects in the prayer book take words and themes from the Bible and turn them into prayers which are appropriate for the season of the church year. Today's collect traces out three important themes. We're reminded first that the Christian life is like a race. We acknowledge in the collect, quote, we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us. The phrase is a summary of the opening line of Hebrews chapter 12, which says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. These words allude to the fact that the race of the Christian life is more like a marathon than a 40-yard dash. This is why we must run with endurance the race that is set before us. There must be no attempts at shortcuts, and there's no tapping out. What is required is endurance. Which brings us to the second theme found in the collect, the fact that we are sore let and hindered in the race that is set before us. The archaic phrase sore let is really synonymous with hindered. Together they form a couplet. The words express the same truth that we are running this race while carrying a burden. What is this burden? In the collect, we acknowledge that it is through our sins and wickedness that we are sore let and hindered. Imagine trying to run a marathon while carrying a boulder. That, in essence, is what we are doing. In the scriptures, sin is often described as a burden which is too difficult for us to bear. For instance, David in Psalm 38 says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For mine iniquities are gone over my head as an heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. You may hear those words and think, that sounds familiar. Well, that's because they're likely the inspiration for our general, general confession, which we will pray in a few moments, where we say, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time have committed by thought, word, and deed against his divine majesty. And then we add, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. 
sin is likened to a burden. It is like a heavy weight that makes running the Christian race all the more difficult. And this brings us to the third biblical theme in our collect, that we need someone to come and help us with this burden. The request is expressed in the opening and abrupt words. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us. This is a ver very wordy cry for help. And whether we realize it or not, we are all in need of help. And the only one who can help us is the Lord himself. The plea is issued to the Father, but we know that it is his Son, our Lord Jesus, who comes to our aid. We have a race to run, yet we have a burden which hinders us. And this burden cannot be lifted by just anyone. This is the whole purpose for the incarnation, which we'll celebrate in just a week. The whole reason behind the Son of God becoming man, the only begotten Son became human so that he could come among us and remove the burden that weighs us down. No one else is mighty enough to lift it. We must turn to him or else fall under sin's weight. St. Peter tells us that Christ, quote, bore our sins in his own body on the tree. The weight of our sin was taken up on the cross by our mighty Savior, who alone has the power to bear that burden. Our Lord bore our sins in his first advent on the cross. He comes to us even now to grant us the forgiveness that we need in the present. And when he comes again in his glorious majesty, he will remove sin in its entirety as he ushers in the renewed creation. In 1992, at the Summer Olympics in Barcelona, there was an iconic moment. Many of you will remember it once I say it. Derek Redmond from Great Britain was running in the semifinals of the 400 meter race. He already, had, he already held the record in his home country and was off to an excellent start in these Olympics. He posted the fastest time in the first round and won the quarterfinal. But in the semifinal race, about halfway through, Redmond immediately pulled up and began hopping on one leg. He had torn his hamstring. Refusing to quit, Redmond hopped on, even as the other participants had crossed the finish line. After hopping on one leg for about 100 meters, another man burst through security and ran onto the track. It was Derek's father, Jim. He put his arm around his son and helped him all the way to the finish line. In a memorable visa commercial for the Olympics many years later, the voice of Morgan Freeman narrated the scene by saying, he and his father finished dead last, but he and his father finished. As we seek to run the race of life, we're hindered like Derek Redmond. But our hindrance is of our own doing. However, our Heavenly Father in his goodness and grace, like Redmond's father, is committed to seeing us across that finish line. He has provided the way for us to finish the race. He has sent his son to come to us, to lift us up, and to assist us to the finish line. Apart from him, we cannot run this race. But with him, we will cross the finish line and receive the crown that is laid up for us, the crown of everlasting life. 
So today, let us acknowledge that we are sore let and hindered in running the race set before us. Let us cry out to God to send his son to help us. He will come to us, lift every burden that we bear, and grant us a place with him in everlasting glory. Amen. Now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. service continues on page 74 of your prayer books. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. 
we beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn into him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You're also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You're also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying...
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. <clears throat>
now for those joining us by live stream and unable to partake of Holy Communion, a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. service continues on the middle of eight, page 83 of your prayer books. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.